Hey everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can look at what website connections are being made. And I'm not talking about just DNS. I'll show you DNS first, but I'm talking about the HTTPS hello. And I'll show you what I mean with that. So let's go. Okay, what I've got here is a packet capture showing UDP port 53, which assumes, of course, you're not doing DNS over HTTP, but HTTPS. But anyway, let's say I go to, I don't know, google.com. You'll see the, the requests go out here. So you see lots of requests. But that's only DNS. I'm not worried about that. That in itself doesn't mean I connected to anything. That just means I did a lookup. So that's not what I'm after. Now this time I've got DNS, but I've also got TCP port 443, and there's some background stuff going on. But what I want to show you is, if I go to reg.bomb.gov.au, you see this comes up. So I'll stop both of these captures. Stop, stop, stop. So you can see it did the regular DNS lookup for BOM. That's fine. But over here, you've got this TLS part. Now, when it makes a connection to TLS, it has to, tell it, it has to tell it which server it's going to. So I'll show you what I mean by that with something locally. Now we've got some demo web servers here. I've got demo1, which is at that address, 4.20. I've got demo2, which is at the same address, and demo3, which is also at the same address. Because the point is, you can have multiple web servers on the same IP address. So how does a web server know which website you actually want to go to? Okay, so this time I'm going to look at TCP port 443 for the HTTPS connection and just the host that I'm going to, so it trims it down a bit. Okay, now I'll start fresh. HTTPS, demo one. Now I'll get a SERP warning because I just put in a dodgy SERP just to get us going. But you see that went there. And if I go to HTTPS, demo two. Same again, SERP warning. That's not the point of the video. HTTPS, demo three. You get the same sort of thing. So you can see I've got three different websites coming up there, three different domains, beautiful, but they go to the same address as I showed in the ping. So now we'll look at this capture. Now you see the usual stuff, Sin, Sinac, Ag, beautiful, but then you see a client hello. So let's put that out here a bit. Somewhere in that client hello from the web browser, it had to tell that web server or the web proxy up there which actual web page it wanted to see. So somewhere in here is something that says demo one. Now it's actually the server name. Now, sometimes you can see them pop straight out over here, but I can't in this case. But either way, you got the server name down here, which is server name demo one. Yeah, it's hidden right there. <laughs> Should have seen that. Anyway, you could just normally just click on that and it would take you straight down here. So that's the server name indication that tells the, well, the proxy server which website you actually want to go to so it can forward it through. And if I went to one of the others, I'll show you in a second actually. If I just want to see that here, just see server names, I can apply that as a column, and then you can see if there's a server name, it, it pops right out. So you can see demo one it went to, demo two, demo three. And if I just want to see those, what you do there is just, if you just want to see that, that value or any value in Wireshark, just prepare that as a filter, which just means put it up here but don't run it yet. So I'm preparing it, and then I'm just taking out that particular value, and that just says anything with a server name. So that just trims it right down. So that is a way of seeing what site you're going to. So what I'll do now is I'll take out just that host and go back to the main one. And now if I go to something like reg.bomb.gov.au, you'll see the names that it actually went to. It popped up there. And if you go to other things like, I don't know, google.com, probably heaps. Yep, see, all sorts of stuff, fonts, this, that, the other. So you can see what connections are actually being made, which is different to DNS. Now I did a video years ago, look, six years ago, showing how to capture TCP dump remotely and display it locally on Wireshark. So you can check that out. But briefly, I'll go through it again. Now, one thing I want to point out that a lot of people might not realize is whenever you're doing a capture, if, even if you haven't saved it, there's a temp file being made, make that a little bit smaller. There's a temp file being made in, uh, in the temp directory. So whatever you're capturing is gonna be there. So you can see I've still got these two captures open here. That's why there's two Wireshark files there and they'll get as big as, as they get. So, so keep that in mind. Now I've got a shortcut for that, router Wireshark. What I do is I just run this. So SSH root at the router, which is OpenSense, TCP dump with the parameters that I give it. Uh, I can't even remember what the U was. Write to standard out and then pipe that to the input, which is standard in of Wireshark. And that just says start capturing straight away. So now when I go router Wireshark, capture on, uh, let's say the LAN interface, TCP port 443. Okay, and it's come up on another screen, but here it is. So that shows my 
LAN port on the router and the TCP stuff. But as you can see, it even says here, file, temp Wireshark. That's that temp file I was talking about. So that's building up. So if I do, I don't know, something new, willyweaver.com.au, I can't even remember. .com, there you go, oh, that's America. I think we've got a .au. No, fuck, doesn't matter. Either way, it's served its purpose. You can see all the traffic going there. And like, as I said, I could um, sort by server name, which would just easily show which ones have a server, or I could just show that name only, like I did before. So that's cool, that's, that lets you see them. But I want to use T-Shark instead of Wireshark, just to keep it on a CLI. So I'm going to do a similar command. I'm going to SSH root at the router, 10.254, and I'm going to run TCP dump and just interface uh, IGB0 TCP port 443 dash U dash W dash Z. Right, that's cool. And then I'm going to pipe that this time to T shark dash L dash N dash Q dash R. Actually, I won't do Q. I'll come back to Q dash R and start reading from standard in. And I'm going to use a display filter. And there's a display filter. The display filter is the same one as, as Wireshark. So there it is there. Okay. And I want to just show which fields. I only want to see. Uh, the time, the source address, and the server name. So what I'll do is I'll say T fields. And I want frame time, IP.source, and TLS, that thing I just showed a second ago, Shantec extensions server name. And if I've got that right, that should work. So now, let me go to something. Let's go to protonmail.com, is it? Okay, I went to that. You can see, I'll just piss that off. You can see what's going out and from where. So I'll stop that. You can see that at this time, this address went to that, that device. Now that's all good, but actually, I should have kept that running, showing you, buddy. I'll do that again. I'll do it to something else. I'll go to, I'll uh, just use Google. Why not? Use Google. And what I want to show you is in the temp directory, that file is right there. So it's now already five meg and I haven't even done anything. So you can see the problem, even though I've only got three lines of text here, I'm seeing four megs, probably even already gone up, 4.9 meg. If I started doing some actual traffic, um, big traffic, started doing stuff, I'm just mucking around here. You can see what's happening. So let's have a look at the size, up to six meg, and I haven't even started any video or anything. So what I really want is to get this without having to do everything else. So now I'm gonna do that command again, except this time I'm gonna put that dash Q in, which is a complicated flag, but it basically means do a one pass. So normally you do two passes. So when you do things in Wireshark like a ping, and it says this response is for that request in frame, whoop de whoop it's because it's got the whole thing. But because I'm doing this from a piped source, I can do the dash Q, which only does a one pass. You, otherwise, it would create that temp file every time. So now if I go to some, some websites here, just go to whatever, okay, just random shit on here. You can see that's there, but what you won't see, if I um, list the temp directory, you won't see any Wireshark temp files being made in, in here anymore. So that saves a file being built from all this. So this can just run now and you don't have to worry about the, the file getting too big or anything. Now I showed that with TCP port 443, but these days you have to include UDP port 443 too. So UDP port 443 or TCP port 443. What did I do? Something went wrong there. Yes, that's what I meant. So that'll capture everything. Now all sorts of stuff comes in and as I play stuff, it'll just uh, you know fill that up. So some of that could be coming from UDP or TCP. It doesn't really matter, it catches them both. But what good is that on here? It's better if you can actually log it somewhere. So rather than reinvent the wheel, you can just send this as a syslog message. So I've got a little script here. And it looks a bit like this. So just in Python say, yep, um, send it to the syslog server. I'm gonna capture this interface. Those parameters I put in the command, I'm just putting here. Um, in this script, so tag TLS SNI, and say, yep, yeah, when you get a message in, send it out there. So the same command is there, and I'm sending it out to the um, thingamajig, where is it? 
this here, when a message comes in, it says, hey, syslog, send it, which is up here. It just sends it out, UDP, nice and simple. I'll get Wireshark going and go UDP port 514, which is the syslog port. So now when I start that, what you'll see as I do things, like, um, oh, what's a website that's not dodgy? <laughs> is Yahoo still around? Okay, Yahoo still lives. Um, what you'll see is a whole bunch of crap they do when you go to Yahoo. But in, but in the packet capture, you can see the syslog is getting sent out. So it's given the host name of this thing, which I might remove. But time um, IP address that did it, which is this one in this case, and where it went. So that's what it did. So that's being sent out as syslog. So now on a syslog server, you can see messages that came from it. You go, oh yeah, here's a message. Oh yeah, TLS program. And you can just search for whatever. You say, Yahoo is looking at Yahoo. You can say, okay, Yahoo was looked up from this address here at this time. So there's no point reinventing the wheel. We've got syslog servers, so you can just send a log to that. All right, so that's pretty much that. The key things I want to point out is just because someone's done a DNS lookup doesn't mean they've made a connection to that website. The website connection, if it's HTTPS, which most things pretty much are nowadays, it'll have that client hello as part of the initial TLS message, and that's what I'm capturing here. Now, some places like Cloudflare use ECH, which is encrypted client hello, so I'll leave a link about that, but basically that, the idea of that is it'll just say Cloudflare ECH, um, ECH or something as the server name rather than the actual server name because the real one will be hidden within to give you a little bit more privacy but it, I haven't seen it too widely used yet as you just saw most things just give their real name. Now another thing you've got to remember is all that traffic had to initially come to the capture first be it Wireshark or, or T-Shark or whatever. So in this case everything that was going out of my router port had to be doubled up over that SSH connection, well the TCP port 443 stuff had to also go back to this computer so there's a, a bit of a double path so if you had this on a big system where you wanted to capture everything going out your gateway into the internet, you, you could do a port mirror. You could do a port mirror of that and have a Raspberry Pi sitting on there capturing all the stuff. Just keep in mind that whatever bandwidth's going out on port 443 will also be coming to your capture device. And then, of course, you filter it out to get your couple of lines of text. But I just wanted to show you that to show you how you can use this stuff and just simple tools like TCP dump, T-Shark and a syslog server and you can see every connection that's being made even if they're using um, encrypted DNS it still has to have the server name until ECH gets widely adopted. So anyway that'll do for now. Till next time take it easy.